go for our AC chat and rap show. It's the 25th of January, down under. And after all of the happenings last week and the potential relaunching of Patriot tomorrow, I thought that we'd have a little bit of a chat about the damage and just what repairs may have been needed over the past few days. My name's Nick Douglas. It's so nice to have you here with us on Adventures of a Sailor Girl on either Facebook or YouTube. No racing today again, as there was none yesterday. Ineos Team UK straight through to the final of the Prada Cup, the Challenger Series for 36th America's Cup. So today I thought we would go live. Yesterday we went live and had a little bit of a chat about the damage and ran through the interviews after our amazing wrap-up show with John Bertrand on Sunday. You can re-watch that, of course, on all of our channels today given that New York Yacht Club are potentially going to be back on the water tomorrow. Fingers crossed. I thought we would bring in a fellow adventurer. He's a boat builder and he's helped me out in the past to get things sorted myself when I've been overseas and getting ready to race. So I wanted to call on his knowledge and input. He's currently trying to get all of the boats ready for the British uh, Olympic team to go over to Tokyo He's uh, been a boat builder for 22 years for anything from dinghies all the way through to TP52s and beyond. I have Pete Jarry on the show for us today from Zest Boatworks. Great to have you with us, Pete. How are you? <laughs> Not too bad. How are you? I'm good. And where are you in the world, just so that everybody knows? <laughs> uh, in Southampton in the UK. Fantastic. Now, I first met Pete because he did a fantastic job on my mate Nick Murray's 18-foot uh, skiff. It looked like the Union Jack. That was a cracker. It was good. All painted on. Um, yeah, he was pretty happy with it. Yeah, he was pretty happy with it. I actually saw that boat at the end of the Fastnet. He'd sold it and I saw it a few years later at the end of the Fastnet um, battling down at Plymouth, which was quite fun, but it's very distinctive, that boat. And, um, and yeah, but I think we should probably get straight to it. Um, what's yep. the best way to do this, Pete? Should we show people what happened and then talk about the damage or what would you like to do? Yeah, we can do. Yeah, do let's that? have a look at it crashing again. A bit of crash. I, and this is a question I really need to ask you, actually, and I've, I've asked you off air before. It must be a serious struggle for you guys as boat builders. And I know quite a few boat builders and, and Andrew Dolly Davola, who's a good mate of mine, has been quite vocal on the comments on my page. So a shout out to Dolly as well. And if he's around here, feel, feel free to get involved, Dolly. I just popped him a message actually. But um, yeah, I think it must be a really hard line for you guys to walk uh, when you really need people to break their boats to fix them. But you know, you don't want people to break their boats because you're a sailor. How do you how do you deal with that? Uh, it's hard. We <laughs> we always say to our customers when they pick up their boats, you know, we yeah. don't want to see you too soon, but you know, come back. But you know, we just want to see what they're doing and how they're fixing it. You know, we're interested. I think everyone's interested in just knowing how the extent of the damage and what they're doing. You know, it's a good story, and I think you know everyone wants to know not just us weirdos that like fixing stuff so yeah there's that the weirdos that like fixing stuff but but as you said it can be quite interesting to actually see what's going on in the shed so to speak and um we all know that there's probably been an immense amount of work going on in the shed to fix um uh, what what we saw go down and I'm i'm actually just trying to find this footage for you to go over it because it was basically a maneuver for an ac 75 so a 75 foot boat that we might have seen on an 18 foot skiff uh coming that far yeah. out of the water yeah i mean it was uh, a very high out of the water for a boat that's probably not really supposed to be that high out of the water yeah. um and you can see from the helicopter footage of it just going sideways. It's no longer going forwards anymore. Um, and it's just landing with the whole skin just flat onto the surface of the water. And, you know, we've seen dinghies fall off the top of double stackers and they weigh less than 100 kilos. So 
a few yeah. tons landing pretty much what is onto solid concrete is just going to do just immense damage. So solid concrete, explain that to me a bit. You're saying that the, the water well, basically... Yeah, I mean, we all know we've all fallen off at high speed, haven't we? It's not soft in the slightest. So it's not going to give in any way whatsoever. It's not, it's not, the boat's not ploughing through the waves. It's not cutting its way through. It's just landing smack straight on top of it. Yeah, far out. And it was just a massive slap down essentially. So I am still searching for this uh, capsized footage in, in itself. There's the capsized writing. Oh my gosh, I, I don't really think I want to watch it again. So maybe if we just talk through a little <laughs> bit of the damage, we've got this yeah. set up uh, here. Talk me through what this looks like. Well, there is, uh, I mean, there's a massive hole in the boat to start with. There was a lot of chat beforehand of maybe a battery pack fell out of the hull or something like that. But uh, the team have come out and said it's literally the force of the water cutting the, the frames of the boat basically cutting a hole in the in the bottom um we know there would be a, a transverse frame for the front of the uh foil housing mm -hmm. which is at the back of that hole there is there's been a picture you can see a longitudinal frame at the bottom of the hole yeah i'm just bringing um, which that explains in for thing. you now i think let me see if I can grab that for you. And, and Pete's done a few little drawings for us, which is pretty amazing. So here's, <laughs> here's the the structure here that you're talking about with those longitudinals. Yeah, basically. So there's a longitudinal a run forwards and and a frame at the at the back of the hole, which would have the foil structure in it. So that would be a very strong frame, which is why the the cracking doesn't really go past that framework mm -hmm. um but then forwards there's a big long crack that runs forward of the top of the hole um this and if there is if yeah. that one there mm -hmm. on the top running forwards um and there's also a big load of delamination running up to the top sides of the hole or the bilge i suppose you'd call yeah. it almost um and so that is just creased entirely but if there is a framework um at the front of the hole then that is surely going to have been broken because the whole skin's cracked all the way up forwards so that whole area um you can see the unis that have peeled off of it yeah um but that whole area that whole skin the the core will be delaminated off basically that whole blue area yeah is pretty much uh broken laminate so the core would have delaminated the inside skin's probably broken any frames in that section particularly running forwards uh, will have a bit of damage to them whether they've snapped entirely um but this blue circle shows the extent of you know what we speculate to be the damage yeah. and um the the piece that team new zealand have made to go on patriot is mm -hmm pretty much that size so it's yeah. obviously quite a substantial bit of damage and you um you sent this image to me and i'm guessing it's from the uh the american magic website but if you can see the size of this panel here uh yeah yeah and that shot's probably by jesus renato a shout out to jesus who's a good friend of the show from sailing energy but you can see them there that that panel is just huge pete i mean it, it is ginormous i mean it's bigger than whole dinghies you know yeah. that's got to be a quarter of sort of the whole bow area of the front of the boat it's mm. it's huge and for them to have knocked up um you know a temporary mold and have been able to mold that in this space of time is is incredible as well i mean they've obviously got the facilities to do it but that's the exciting thing about it is they're able to make a whole section of boat and then cut out the damage and bond it all in and yeah. that's kind of what we want to see a bit more of because yeah. i mean it's pretty cool because the america's cup and, and you're working with the the uh, the british olympic team as well but 
the America's Cup and the Olympics, they're sort of the top of our sport and, and where we see things get pushed in terms of design. And maybe we're seeing things now get pushed in terms of repairs as well. Next level. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's there's quite a lot of stuff you can fix overnight. Yeah. Um, but this is, you know, a, a, a sixth of a high performance racing yacht that's being yeah. cut out of the bottom and, 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 and re laminated in. And all with cure schedules of pre breaks and yeah. and that sort of thing. It's it's impressive that yeah, if they do get it even just ready to measure tomorrow, let alone back out on the water, it'll be um, a massive feat and a, a big achievement. Yeah, it will be incredible and. I just, I, I mean, we all want to see them get out there, and that's where we spoke about this earlier. The boat builder, boat builder, uh, gut instinct to want to fix things and build things, but ultimately you want to build things, right? It's not just about the fixing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's funny. Some people like to have the, the the physical building of stuff, but actually, the the quick turnaround of being able to fix something like that or or anything is. Um, you know what gets you excited because building a boat you've got quite a long time scale to do it whereas actually you know they need to fix this in less than a week so <laughs> it's uh it's pretty that's, that's the exciting bit long hours but <laughs> yeah so we've got a few a few people commenting on on what we're talking about here so feel free to take this on pete's doing very well isn't he everybody for his first time live he's going <laughs> he's going great guns so yeah, Russ says, um, Russ says water is incompressible. So when you hit it at speed, it's like hitting a solid object. So that then explains yeah. this. Oh, there it is. I mean, that's got to be 30 feet in the air. Yeah. By the time it starts to come back down again. And and it's not 30 feet going forward, it is sideways and down on, you know, 90 degrees to that panel. And, and you can that's see what that jerk is, that you said. The, yeah, you can see the sideways movement that you, you said there on the on the actual wing. I mean, if we just go back a bit, I'll try and get that moment where they go sideways. I don't have it from the air right this second, but I'm sure I can find it before the end. You can see it in this particular spot i'll try and rewind it there we go you can see the the water actually pushing away from them there when they start yeah. to go sideways um i mean even looking at the, the force there. of the water coming up off of the foil yeah is is going to have it could potentially be what punched the hole in the bottom that massive spray going up there just in front of the foil now mm could be what punched the hole in the bottom of the boat. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's a force of water it's going up and the boat's coming down on top of it. Yeah. That's, it's just nuts. I, I burst into tears when it happened and I haven't been afraid to say that because ultimately to start <laughs> with, yeah, ultimately to start with, I was just afraid for, for people's lives. And then once we realized that yeah. was okay, um, I, I didn't think that it would come up with a hole in it, though. I mean, you just always imagine that boats are going to be okay. But Simon Ling says, I suspect American Magic will come back very strong. Hutch has the bit well and truly between his teeth. He's a wonderful leader. Let's hope Dean is okay and equally up for it. Andrew Dolly, Davola, my mate, said, uh, the mould is big. Had a laugh when they were making it and people thought the boat was being repaired with chop strand. <laughs> We've had a few giggles. I did like those comments. Sticking yeah, that yeah, back a good in. bit of Facebook. Yeah, <laughs> a bit of banter there. So, uh, I mean, ultimately though, this this bit, how will they fit it back in? I mean, talking technically, and and we can't really watch it, but we can look at this picture. How do they get that? Yeah. Bit back in. Oh, you have to cut out everything that's broken in the bottom of the boat. Mm. Uh, and normally it so, with nice square edges. So everything and then, here. <laughs> so everything there, but neater. Um, and then yeah, cut out the same panel to match. You and you, you leave a bit of overlap on the inside skin, um, and and you just glue it in. Yeah, it's, it's as easy as that. But it's it's 
a lot of measuring to get it all to fit nicely. And mm. then you've got to then over laminate the, the inside and outside skin. So they're as structurally strong as they were originally. Yeah. Cause that was going to be my next question. Like, will it, could it then happen again if you fix something? Because it, it'll be a tiny bit stronger just because really? there'll be a little bit more laminate over um, that section of the boat, just where they laminated that new bit to the original whole skin. But yep. there's no reason why if it did slam down in the same place that it wouldn't do it again. Yeah. Because they're not going to make it um, belt and braces because that's adding weight to a boat that you don't want to add weight to. Yeah. So you'll try, they'll try and keep it as original as possible. Yeah, for sure. Because... I guess though, then they're going to lose maybe an inch of speed because the boat will be slightly heavier. Uh, it will probably, uh, when we repair boats, we like to think they come out the same. Yeah. So it will and be, at this level. You know, within, <laughs> yeah, it will yeah. be within a percentage, mm -hmm. a, a tiny percentage. The same. I'm just asking all the questions um, for for people who may, might not know, might not be pretty, but they should get the job done, says Harry Coughlin. And um, when an aeroplane crashes on wet concrete or water, that's exactly what happens. And I guess we've seen aeroplanes land on water before where they, they break up and this isn't as yeah, aggressive. So it's, yeah, the they same sort pop. of motion, I yeah. guess. Yeah, so... But going I, back to the other comment... Yeah, go for it. It will... I, I, you'll be surprised. I think it'll come out of the shed and you won't even... No, no, it won't even look like it's been repaired. Yeah. They're, they're, uh, they'll be determined to get it looking as it was, the boat right. builders. Yeah, that's crazy. So I have a little clip here with Terry and a, and a few more words about just what happened from his point of view. I mean, we haven't heard specifics, but I thought maybe we we could take this opportunity just to look at this. And, and Terry has been so strong through all of this. So here we go. Um, and when you look at the wind graph, the you know the time from 18 knots to 23 knots is about three seconds down the back stays eased but then the next thing that happens there is the main sheet gets eased and that loads into the lured runner that's not the reason that the um that the boat tipped over you know it was um a combination of a couple things that led up to that moment uh we're gonna do whatever it takes and that's what we've done from the get-go you know there has never been a waiver in the commitment being from Doug and Hap and Roger and the New York Yacht Club or from our team members. I mean, we're all in this together. Yikes. <laughs> I wonder how many times... It's just that... seeing it yeah. floundering. <laughs> oh, I wonder how many times that capsize has been played around the world. It's, it's going to be uh, a very memorable one down the line, and I'm not sure if anybody watched the footage from racing on saturday but they replayed a whole bunch of big crashes and and sinkings mm. from from various years across the cup because i think maybe pete when you're pushing it you uh you you can end up in these situations yes i mean the, 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 all america's cup boats are built to with an inch of their lives basically and and like you said you saw that with uh, the videos of one australia and young america folding up and, and one sinking and one not and and it's purely the wrong loads at the wrong time and and you can't design and build a boat to take any possible load that you could possibly imagine because it would be you know, it'd be a wayfarer it, it would it, it, it would just be too heavy it wouldn't do it, it just wouldn't do it so yeah. um you know sadly moments like this happen and it just shows the weakness of of the boat you know in a one in a million incident you know you probably won't see another one in the america's cup but, but you know of a, of a fly up and a capsize and landing like it did yeah well let's hope we don't because it was mortifying <laughs> Yeah, and I haven't managed to get that helicopter footage on, on the screen. I actually don't think that we've got access to that helicopter footage. But as you said, if, if anybody has the opportunity to watch it, and the, the full footage is definitely on my page, 
and we could see it yeah. in that in in the frozen moment um here especially just um here where where it jolts sideways so not only the landing but that jolt sideways but i mean it's that that yeah. shot of water coming up as well that you only see in the slow motion that is just an immense force oh my gosh so, going up and coming down so. i mean if you were to fix this on your own in, in your factory how long would it take you i guess to be you know sorted what kind of man hours are we talking about <laughs> is it what single-handed yeah. it would be um <laughs> be there for months um <laughs> no, I, say, I mean it, it's impressive the the speed they've even um knocked out a temporary mold and uh, molded a panel you know it, it, the, the, the two of us in our workshop we we probably still be laminating the 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 panel section up yeah and they've they've you know, for all we know glued it into the boat and it's already laminated together so yeah. um so i guess that's yeah, where, I mean, yeah we've got a, another comment from simon ling he says let's praise team new zealand for all the amazing help they've provided sailing really leading the way in terms of sportsmanship because obviously it's not only oh. taken one set of boat builders here yeah yeah, definitely. And, and the support that came from from all the teams, you know, yeah. from from pizzas and coffees and, 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 you know, just to just keeping the boat afloat. Um, it's good to see, you know, the sport of sailing, albeit considered, you know, especially the America's Cup, a rich man sport and that kind of thing, but actually the grassroots down and out sportsmanship, are hopefully, um, you know, filters down to the kids yeah. sailing oppies at the local club so which is just beautiful and 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 we saw that with the rescue with all the teams and and all the way through and yeah far out it just makes you keep thinking back to that moment when it happened so yeah a, f a few more questions from the floor if you don't mind pete um would a flexible hull be able to absorb that impact and that was from matthew ross and then along the same line matt cox is carbon too brittle Jatana, the French maxi trimarine is broken again. They're trying to do the Jules Verne, unfortunately, whilst attempting the round the world. <laughs> is it too brittle? Yes. Um, uh, yes, it is. But again, it goes down to what you're designing your boat to handle. Mm -hmm. And we've seen it in in the, um, the round the world race that's going on at the moment as well. Some of those boats are broken, some of them haven't. The older ones are, are making it round. Um, carbon fibre is brittle, but it's also super lightweight and super strong. So that's what you need to build your foiling race boat out of. Um, you couldn't do it with flexible materials. You only have to look at sort of PE plastic boats and, and they're great, they're indestructible, but actually carrying rig tension and and particularly all the loads that go through a foiling boat, um, it, it just wouldn't be strong enough, yeah. um, let alone too heavy. Because now we've seen the move from, um, I mean, we've seen timber, fiberglass, metal, carbon fiber in terms of boat building, and also now in rigging uh, because of that strength. I mean, now even running, running yeah. rigging is getting made out of carbon. Yes, I mean it is, you know, the go-to material because of its all its properties it has. So, but something else will come along in a few years' time, and and you know people will be laughing at, at, at you sailing around in your carbon boat, and um, and it's things like the America's Cup that bring in um, materials and technologies and and the way we build boats. Yeah, so, absolutely. Which eventually filter down. Well, he's hoping for you and for me and for all those boat building enthusiasts out there and 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 anyone who's got a little bit of an interest in just how m massive and, and what a mammoth task this has been. Hopefully they release a, a little bit of a video showing what happened behind the scenes. But for now, hopefully for all the New York Yacht Club <laughs> fans out there, yeah, we, we actually see them get back on the water tomorrow, which would be fantastic and dolly says maybe some kevlar in the laminate would help but they're all about saving weight and that would make it heavier so um, yeah and someone said i think if it was built from glass to the same weight it wouldn't have made the start line <laughs> no it wouldn't have. <laughs> that would have been really flexible <laughs> that would have been really flexible <laughs> i know i love it
when you get in an old fiberglass boat and you can feel the floor moving below you and you're like, oh. Oh, as you're walking across it from yeah. side to side. <laughs> yeah, my, I had my dog here earlier. I introduced it to Pete and I've taken her rowing in our really old, like little rowboat fiberglass dinghy and she's like, oh. What is this floor? <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, that's that's about the standard of the America's Cup boat we'd be looking at with uh, with fiberglass. Yikes. Yeah, oh, definitely. Fantastic. Yeah, so thank you so much for your time today and for actually explaining it to us. I know there's been a lot of chat on my page, but I guess in, in summary, just to take you back through, and, and thanks for drawing up on all of those images, and thank you to Carlo Belenghi for actually being on, on site. Um, but I'll just... Just to summarize for everybody, basically, and, and from what I've understood, basically this whole section will have to come out. Where the red where the red is is where the beams are. And then this massive section that's been built from a mold, thanks to uh, the Emirates Team New Zealand boat builders and the New York Yacht Club boat builders and a whole bunch of other carbon composite specialists, this section will basically be patched in, which will make it even stronger than it was before. Have I got it? Is that right? Have I learned That's something? Much it. Yeah. I've learned about boat building yep. today. <laughs> you have to do it yourself now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I could do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but thank you for your expertise and good luck with packing up all of the, the British Olympic boats and to everybody out there who's getting ready. Fingers crossed we actually get a, a Tokyo 2020 Olympics or 2020 as they're calling it which is quite yeah. strange yeah hopefully yeah, that is. goes ahead yeah. At the, yeah by the sounds of it it's all systems go at the moment i was okay. talking about that yesterday morning but between that and the america's cup and the vonday globe finishing up in the next three days it's going to be a big week in sailing yeah it's exciting seeing as we over here can't go sailing so yeah. it's it's good <laughs> i'm sorry to hear that you guys have it tough at the moment too and and to anybody who's in a in a tough spot and is having to live vicariously whether it be like me just because we're not traveling or it's uh somebody who's actually in, in serious lockdown now our, our thoughts are with you and we're doing the best here that we can at sailor girl hq to try and keep you in the loop even though uh you may not no, be great yeah. in New yeah. Zealand. <laughs> The footage has been excellent. Yeah, it's been <laughs> insane. I feel so lucky. Um, anyway, we'll let you get back to your wine and your lovely evening up there in Southampton. And um, <laughs> someone's saying adventures of a shipwright girl. Uh-oh. Uh, <laughs> another great <laughs> info chat, says Woodsy. He's from the AC Tragic Group. So a shout out to Woodsy there. And, and John Barber says, let's accept the builders know what they are doing. Everything's been pushed to the limits or this would be club racing. And I think that's... That's exactly. about where we where we're looking at, and um, amazing to see the team effort between the different teams. Can't wait for the next stages of the cup. Wish all the sailors and teams the best of luck, which we all do. If anybody wants to follow what we're doing, remember you can find us on Facebook. You can also find us on Instagram at Sailor Girl HQ is where it's at, and loving having you guys. Uh, talking with us as well. I'm live tweeting all the racing on Twitter or you can find us on YouTube and a shout out to everybody on YouTube who might be watching there. It's fantastic to have you with us. It's been even better to have Pete Jarry from Zest Boatworks with us to share his expertise. Awesome to have you all with us. I'll see you tomorrow, hopefully for a little bit of a chat on rules at about this time, just lining up uh, the, the ultimate guest for you, <laughs> that port and starboard incident is probably next on the cards. Thank you so much, Pete. See you all soon. Excellent. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs>
Obrigado.